If there is a time on a high rock lake to catch your biggest striper ever, it's gonna be about right now. Uh, it is not uncommon this time of year. We catch a lot of mid upper teen fish. A lot of folks are very shut mouth about it because that's just the old school way out here at high rock. All right, you ready? Here we go. We're gonna put her in the wind, but we're not going far, about a quarter mile, that's it. All right, so what I do, I like to follow the edge of the drop off and I'll turn back around. And a lot of times I'll come down the other side of the lake and kind of fish the main area. But all right, we're gonna give her a go right here. Can you see some fish on uh, So we're seeing a lot of bait. I can't say we see fish, but this time of year, or actually typically for High Rock Lake, you don't really mark big schools out here. And oftentimes it's just uh, lone fish. You may get a little wolf pack of two, three, four fish. Uh, but for the most part, it's one here, one there. So for the uneducated, just kind of point out what you're looking at here. All right, so well, right, I'll go right behind us. So you have, we have some bait right here, bait right down here. I'm gonna say these might be some crappie right down here as well, but uh, it's looking for pockets of bait here and there. Now we got a little bit of bird activity here as well, which is kind of late in the year for it, but birds generally mean bait as well. Um, so I can't really point out anything at this moment that kind of excites me, but that here we go, for example. Uh, that's probably not a striper, but just that's what I'm looking for. You'll see one, you know, an arch here, an arch there, and that's generally your, uh, your, you know, looking for deeper oranges. Tells us it's a bigger fish. Yeah. So today, I haven't done any pre-fishing, so you're going to get to see what we do for the most part as far as trying to locate fish. Um, all covering a lot of water, and that's why this method right here is a lot better than live bait because you get to roll around and and find them basically, you find their concentrations of where they're at. Good boy. You wanna catch a fish? Yeah, all right, so remember last time in the winter time we fished with the uh, small little three, three and a half inch baits, uh, the shad. This time of year, they seem out here in the high rock, uh, they seem to like these uh, bucktails a lot more. And so actually now I troll all Alabama rigs with bucktails on there. And it seems to do a lot better larger baits than the uh, smaller shad. Um, so I do half and half, uh, half chartreuse and then half white. I'll do a little combination uh, like this one right here, do a white and blue. I got chartreuse with uh, lime green tails over there and oftentimes on these white ones, the last bucktail, I will put a chartreuse snake worm on there as well. But uh, white, blue white, and then a uh, chartreuse seems to do uh, best out here. Again, water clarity plays a huge role in everything. Yeah, as you see right here at the ramp, actually pretty clear, but you turn that corner right there and you get a very, very uh, dingy hue out there. So your typical high rock mud with more mud rolling down now after the heavy rains from the uh, last couple days. But uh, these are all three, uh, three eighth ounce bucktails. And again, I don't change things up. They're all three eighth ounce. They all have the, uh, the the shad shape on there, so these these right here are the ticket for me this time of year. Lot less complicated trolling this time of year as well, because if you remember also we had uh, four, five, six, eight rods last time. Uh, now I actually dropped down to six rods and no downriggers in the spring. And the reason why I do that is because I actually since you got more weight on these lines right here you don't put them as far back. And if you put a downrigger out there, you tend to tangle up a lot more and they seem to key more up on the surface versus down deeper this time of year. So what are the fish doing differently this time of year? So this time of year, what's happening right now is one thing I look for is water temperature. Uh, 62 degrees seems to be the magic mark. Once that water starts touching that, that's when the stripers start kind of flushing out the creeks and feeding uh, in the main lake. Now. What happens from there is a mystery. I feel like most of the striper go up the rivers, maybe some go in the creeks. I do know that smaller fish do stay on the main lake all year long, all summer long. Um, but after I'd say late April into May, they just, the big fish seem to kind of disappear. Um, so it's a mystery. I know a lot of guys don't fish high rock very hard for striper. So it's hard to keep track of what they're doing. So. Our thought is they push the rivers with the water flow that comes down the Yadkin. And as we know, when it rains in the spring, there is tremendous flow going down there. I know a lot of guys catch striper up against the, uh, the dam up there. I guess I call it Idol's Dam up there. Yeah, so 
a lot of guys do very well in the summer months uh, up there as well. Uh, so it's my feeling that these fish go up there, they do a fall spawn, and then they may stay there all summer long or they may start working their way back down. But I do also feel like not all striper leave that river. So you, you do get some that come down and you get some that, that stay all year long, for sure. Uh, and it does seem like the bigger fish do stay up in that river. Uh, Pretty much wintertime and springtime, is the, that's the big time to catch them. Correct, yeah, so you have two windows of uh, time that are very, uh, very good. Um, and again, it's all temperature based. Um, and usually around the first of November, I start waiting for that water temperature to start hitting about 55. Uh, typically speaking, it, in your, your traditional year should be early November, but the last several years, it seemed to be uh, the week or two before yes, Thanksgiving sir. that things have gotten really good because of colder nights, uh, hard freezes and such. Um, this year generally, well, typically uh, this time of year, late winter, early spring, it seems to be around the second to third week of March when things really start getting going out here. Um, that hasn't happened yet. Uh, again, not a lot of folks report out here because not a lot of folks like to fish out here for striper. Um, so one thing that correlate with the striper this time of year um, when I feel like they're ready is I kind of compare them to the crappy. Once the crappy start hitting the beds, that's about the time I've noticed year to year the striper start getting active out in the main lake. Um, so yeah, it's just, it's weird how everything works out. Normally, you know, if they, they kind of compare side to side. So it's, it's kind of, for me, it's hard to go crappy fishing knowing that the striper fishing might be pretty good right now. That's a time of year to be out here, absolutely. Get your first tan of the year, you know. Come out in shorts, flip-flops sometimes. Not today yet, but, uh, you know, I think tomorrow's gonna be a whole different day when it comes to that. Striper, yep, these are all striper sniper. So these are striper sniper bucktails. Uh, striper sniper snake worms, and then the uh, shad as well. One thing I like to do is just bite the tip of it off. Just a tiny bit. It kind of sits on the jig a lot better. Kind of push it through and see how it sits right on that head a lot better. And same thing with the other one. Just kind of get the tip of it. So this is a lot easier fishing than with uh, we did in the winter time because you just put them out and troll. Um, one thing about these uh, bucktails that I noticed is you do tend to miss a lot more fish. So, you know, it's just one of those things, unfortunately. You'll get bites, but a lot of times they'll miss it. Now we sit back and wait. Um, I mean, I wish I could say it's fast paced action, bang, 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 but a lot of times a lot of waiting and and hoping, but generally speaking, when you mark them good this time of year, they'll bite. It's about what we're looking for right there. Like I said, we're not gonna have a big school like you do typically on these other lakes, you know, not spaghetti noodles everywhere, but you're gonna find uh, a big one or, you know, a couple, three, four in small little wolf packs. And that's it. And that's definitely, I almost say pretty high confidence. That's a striper right there, or a couple striper. One thing too, that's important to note is they seem to bite better in the afternoon. Like, I don't like coming out here super early, sunrise, none of that. Uh, that's why I called you out here about 11 o'clock because around this time, that's when we get going, 11 o'clock to about the three o'clock window, which ironic enough was the same thing back in the wintertime. Uh, you know, the, the time they bit best. So yeah, it warms uh, this time of year, uh, the surface. So these fish come up, the shad come up, and then they feed on them. Well, it looks to be a blue cat. Come on. There he is. Don't want to yeah, you know, it's, it's better to catch than sit around and watch lions all day long, you know? I'm not a... As everyone knows me, I'm not a huge fan of catfish, but yeah, still beats not catching anything. 
a decent one. Oh, he come off. Gone. That was him. Er. Yeah. Yeah. Hundred percent striper because he was pulling pulling a lot of uh a lot of line out. Catfish don't do that. Hey Riggs. What are you doing? We well, got a little something on there. I winch him in, but I wanna I want proof there's fish back there. It's a crappy. There's proof that you can catch crappy doing this, see that? There you go. See? You can catch crappy doing this as well from time to time. He will keep for dinner though. That's a female. Yeah, I think we got the real deal here. But it's possible it may be our striper we're looking for, just not the right size. Find out here in a second. White bass. It's about 14 inches, but regardless, we're gonna throw him back. Skunk's out. This time of year, I spend most of my time on um, High Rock here and baiting. Uh, Lake Norman is great. You know, I do love Norman wintertime, but I have a hard time leaving a lake close to my house for crappy and uh, larger striper than the uh, than the hybrids there that uh, Lake Norman has. But uh, but yeah, so I do a charter out here, good bit. I try not to run charter trips for striper on a, a high rock because, as we discussed uh, prior, it's very disappointing. You can come out here and you can absolutely catch a good amount. You know, you might catch six, six to eight is a pretty dang good day out here in a high rock this time of year. But there's days that you get humble and you fish hard for, again, just that one bite. So you never know time to time what happens.